Questo Maxi Rib è lo scanner MV1400 ed è la terza volta che lo provo. This Maxi Rib is the scanner MV1400 and it's the third time I've tried one of these. Yet every time with different engines. It's very easy to order it. You just have to go to the shipyard, tell them the model, the number and the power of the engines. They'll take care of the rest. Well, obviously you need the right budget and consider that we are talking about a boat that is almost 14 meters long. What I meant is that you can set it up in agreement with the shipyard. The first time I tried it, it had three 425 horsepower Yamaha XTO outboards. The second time it had two 440 horsepower D6 Volvo Penta stern drives. And now it's equipped with three 450 horsepower Mercury engines. This is the most powerful version. Scanner carries out everything in-house, in designs, builds, assembles the tubular, the furnishings, the systems, the engine. And the NV1400 has been designed by Donato Montemitro, who's also the founder of the shipyard. What do you see from above? A large inflatable boat with a lot of living space and a T-top that shelters not only the pilot seat. What do you see from below? A tube blur that, from stern to bow, moves away from the surface because aft serves to stabilize the hull. At the bow, it's used to overcome the waves and on the inside, the boat right in the middle of the hull, it's used to create high and protective bulwarks. Quelli a cui non piacciono i gommoni dicono che questi sono soltanto dei parabordi. Those who don't like inflatable boats say that these are just fenders, but they forgot that they are full of air and if unfortunately there was a problem, these huge tubulars keep you afloat, at least in most cases. It's a large boat, which means it's heavy, but it's also a fast vehicle. As a consequence, solicitates the gluing of the tubulars, and to avoid this problem, Scanner has given the tubulars a particular shape and harnessed them in a fiberglass structure. At the bow, the sunbed is fitted between two sides that are equipped with handrails, so you can try to lie down here even while sailing, when the weather conditions allow it. You can also lie down at the stern, because even here they mounted protections around the sun pads. In the center, there's a classical yet elegant hallway, which brings you to the aft bridge, where, despite the three outboards, we have room to dive, climb back on board and sit on a step and admire the engines. The cockpit allows you to dance on board, which is a fun way to tell you that there is a lot of space, and it can also be used to have lunch. Take a look. The table lifts up, and the surface where you put the dishes is not the same one you step on. These side decks are an extension of the cockpit sofa. Wouldn't you sit here and have a drink? As an alternative to the T-top, the shipyard proposes a hard top with possible side closures and a high windshield, which is recommended if you sail in the northern seas. I don't know if you've ever noticed how much care is put into the driver's seat of cars. There's a very specific reason and is because what we see in our car for most of the time is the dashboard. The same thing happens here. Plus, we have a motorization which deserves to be recalled even through the dashboard. I'm more and more excited to try it, but first I'm going to take you below deck. The bulkheads that separate the forward double berth can be removed to have a more spacious area. The majority of the surface is dedicated to the dinette because a 14-footer is a boat that must be used even when a storm breaks out. Here on the side there is a sofa, while on the other side there is a chest of drawers. But since it's a customizable product, you can change the furniture in agreement with the manufacturer. The aft berth is dedicated to children or a couple without too many pretensions. 
Even the bathroom could be set up as you wish. It's always difficult and risky to compare two boats, even more than navigating in rough seas. But we have the opportunity to do it, and I'm not backing down. As I mentioned before, I've already tested this inflatable, the Scanner MV1400, with three different motorizations. The two 440 horsepower D6 engines by Volvo Penta with DPI stern drive. The three 425 horsepower Yamaha XTOs. And now the 450 horsepower Mercury Racing. Now, in my opinion, which of the three ship owners made the right choice? I would like to remind you that I've never tried this inflatable in such difficult conditions. And then all these three different versions may not have had the exact same weight due to the different setups, furnishings, plants and accessories. The northern wind on the Ligurian coast will cause us to find rather formed waves in the middle of the sea. In the meantime, I brought it into plane at 12 knots, the same minimal trim pace that I had it with the Volvos. While with the three Yamaha outboard engines, perhaps due to their greater weight, we had to reach 17 knots to plane. I like it. I like how the bow cuts through the waves, and I also like this tubular, which acts as a deflector for the splashes of water. Now, imagine you are in a very difficult situation. Think about that bow and how these tubulars can protect and defend you from the waves. There is such a strong wind that it deforms many cheeks, and I can hardly speak. OK, I'm going to change my course, and in the meantime, I also want to test the veering. Excellent. The skid angle is impressive. It really makes you feel safe. 25 knots. With diesel engines, three litres per mile were enough. With Yamaha engines, it took five litres per mile. With these Mercury engines, we're at six litres per mile. Can you see how the sea is rising as we move away from the coast? But that won't stop us from going faster and faster. Thirty-four knots with the Volvo Penta, 3.7 litres per mile were enough. With Yamaha XTOs, we needed 5.3 litres per mile. Here, with three Mercury's, we're at 5.6 litres per mile. But as I said, these are tougher conditions. The angle of attack is ideal. I don't even need to use the trim, unless I decide to put it at full speed. In the meantime, look, really watch how it opens the water and how smooth it is, even when it finds high waves. With diesel engines, it stopped at 40 knots of maximum speed because the total power was 880 horsepower, but we have 1,350. Full throttle. It's crazy. What waves?
The regime goes up. Let's give it some time. 52, 53, 54 knots. Wow. With the Yamahas, we had reached 52 knots, but we have an additional 75 horsepower and a few kilos less. The Scanner NV1400 is not afraid of speed, it's not afraid of power, and it's not afraid of waves either. 